Here's a question for you. When somebody asks me what's my favorite non-performance car, so a car that isn't designed for speed, power, or breaking silly records, my answer would be the Toyota Land Cruiser. What would yours be? But before I get started on today's video, let's do a little history lesson on the Toyota Land Cruiser. In 1950, during the Korean War, the UN and America approached Japan and some of its manufacturers, including Toyota, to build some rugged four-wheel drives. And Toyota gave birth to the Toyota BJ. Fast forward a couple of decades and a few decades, and comes the Land Cruiser. So this thing here is my personal Land Cruiser. I've owned it just shy of two years. I mean, when I bought it, I gave seven, close to seven and a half grand for it back in May 2021 and uh, the guy I bought it off owned it from new and I bought it with 191,000 miles on it and it's currently on 205,000 I mean if you're a Land Cruiser fanatic and you're watching this it's probably still in its running in stage <laughs> but no as you can see in the background we're in the green lanes of North Wales and uh, I've got some boots on and we're going to test it out Right, before we go, let's turn on the engine. Now, little fact of the day, this was the first Land Cruiser to ever have active height control ever installed. So a little guy like me trying to get in there, I can even lower it. Look, before we go, there's a few driver modes to, to, uh, to select from, especially when you're off-roading. So you've got your, your low and high gearbox ratio, and you've also got the centre diff lock, and you've also got the option for a rear diff lock, but that's, uh, that's when you're really in trouble. But for now, I'm just going to keep it on the centre lock in the high box because uh, we're not in any troubles yet. But uh, let's hope, let's hope that we don't need it. Let's go. So, nice little bumpy road here. Now, one thing I am... Wow. That's steep. Now, one thing I'm a little bit wary of is that I'm on road tyres. Now, I've just got to keep an eye out for any sharp, sharp rocks or sharp boulders. And then we really are in a mess because uh, one thing that really shouldn't do is come out by yourself when you're four-wheel driving. And especially a place like this, there's no service. So uh, let's hope the gods are with us today. Land cruisers are widely used worldwide and especially in Australia and Africa. But in Australia, out of all Land Cruisers produced ever, they have purchased 10% of them, which is a lot when you think of it. Now, going back before when I said a car that's not made for, for breaking records, now I am sorry because the Land Cruiser has actually broken a record. Now, the Land Cruiser holds the record for the longest drive ever. 741,000 kilometers driven by a couple that just drive around the world. I think they've been to 181 countries in an old, I think it's a 60 series Land Cruiser. That's a pretty good record to have. Now in 1981, 30 years after they produced the first Land Cruiser, Toyota sold 1 million. Nine years later, in 1990, they sold 2 million. So this is the Land Cruiser 100. In the UK, we call it the Amazon. Now its predecessor, the 80 series, it was a prob probably a little bit more suited to going off-road, only because on the 80 series, you get two live axles, two solid axles, front and rear. With the 100 series, you get an IFS, independent front suspension, but you get a solid axle at the rear. Now, flexibility-wise and articulation, the 80 series is probably a little bit more suited to that. However, if you do want the, the 100 series with the solid axle, front and rear, you can get a 105 series. So as we're going down this steep bit here, I'll just put it in low, because I don't really want to be relying on the brakes too much, and uh, just let the engine do the work and, and roll down. Beautiful. Now, a little tip when you're off-roading. Always keep your thumbs free, because if the, if the steering wheel is about to flick one way, it doesn't catch your thumbs, and you might have a little injury. So, engine. In the Land Cruiser, in this model, it's a 4.2 litre straight six diesel. Now, you could only get two variations of engine, two different engines in, in the 100 series, one being the 4.2 and 
and the other one being the 4.7 V8 petrol. Now, in the UK, the petrol, and it's a two and a half ton car, it's not gonna be the most economical of things, but Land Cruisers aren't made to be economical. You know, they're made just to be reliable. And as we get onto the reliability stage, I've never had any problems in my ownership in this, in terms of the engine. And the only problems I've had with this is the active height control. So a little hydraulic pipe bursts and the uh, suspension on the rear it collapsed. And it was just a little pipe, probably about that big. So I thought, oh, sound, I get hydraulic specialist to, to bespokely make one. No, nope, they weren't going to touch it. They didn't want to touch it. So I thought, okay, let's go to Toyota. And that was uh, 560 pounds later. So here's one. Bad thing about Land Cruisers, when they go wrong, they are expensive. Toyota built these from 1998 to 2007. So they're in production for nine years. Now, this is the full fat Land Cruiser. Now, UK customers, you've been fooled. When you now buy a new Land Cruiser, it's not really a Land Cruiser. It's a Land Cruiser Prado badged up to be a Land Cruiser. You can't get the full fat one. Don't know why Toyota did it. I'm guessing because there wasn't a market for it. They weren't selling as much, but it is a shame because they are a big brute of a car. And they probably are talking about they have cars have got bigger they are probably a little bit too big for the for the uk roads nowadays you can only really find the new 300 series in australia africa and now even russia but not usa okay so in front of me we're coming to a bit of a rock call bit of a, a technical part of the track so before we go i'll just hire the suspension so the rocks don't catch any of the bodywork wait for that to go up does take a few years and the center dip lock is already on so uh, let's have a go so first of all when I'm off-roading I don't look what's ahead of me I look what I'm gonna be driving over because one rock slip through the tire like that and you're in trouble always pick your line and stick with it don't always go for the most glamorous line something that's gonna be look good just go for the line that's gonna get you out I must say it's very impressive of this car almost 20 years old on road tires still hitting the lanes in North Wales without breaking any sweat all right I think I've got my line and I'm just gonna hit into it It's gripping, it's gripping, it's got over it, no problems. I think the back tire's just gone up. Why did I even sweat about that? Bloody hell. <laughs> that was easy. They do say, the Aussies do say, if you want to get in the bush, you take a Land Rover. But if you want to come home, Land Cruiser. Little education lesson here. As you can see, the Land Cruiser is in perfect nick. Now this is what happens, guys, when you bring a Land Rover. I told you, you can't go home. If you want to go home, you get one of them. But no, in all seriousness, jokes aside, tell them by the alloys and the shape here, it's a Suzuki Vitara. Um, you shouldn't, I mean, you're in the, the countryside, why people do this, obviously insurance claim, it's a shambles really. Now some people ask me, why Land Cruisers, why do I love them so much? Now, my dad, I was brought up in Land Cruisers, my dad had got to be near 10 of them. Um, when I was growing up to about five, six, he, he had two of these and he had a 90 series Colorado. And I just remember them being awesome. You know, imagine being a little kid in the back. It felt like a tank, it felt like a palace. To own one does hold, wow, it does hold a special place in my heart. I know you probably laugh at me saying that, but I do love Land Cruisers. I have a connection with it. Having a Land Cruiser is like having a loyal dog. 
can get you out any situations, but very dependable and reliable. Now, to be honest, I thought I would have give <laughs> the Land Cruiser a bit of a, a run for its money today down these lanes, but it hasn't broken a sweat. Where do I go here? So I think it's time for the obligatory road test to see how, it, how the feedback is if you're going to daily drive one. But in terms of off-roading, and with off-road and with normal road tyres, 10 out of 10. So that's the end of the, um, the off-road test with the Land Cruiser. What's it like on the road? Now, first of all, it's a very heavy car and you can feel that. Put it into the corners, it does sway a lot. However, with it being oil suspension, it's very comfortable. And there are a few luxurious touches that you get in this Land Cruiser. Now, bear in mind it's a 2003 model. You get the touchscreen infotainment and also a climate zone which you, can, which you control via the screen. I mean, that's newer day stuff. You also get heated seats, which is always a very nice option. And the seats are also electrically adjusted. Now, the, the seating position is, you know, you're nice and high. It's, it's a nice grand position. And the view of the road is awesome. So one thing I absolutely love about the Land Cruiser is a sunroof. It's always good in good weather. You can always open it. So this is a seven-seater in total, two in front, three in the mid, and two at the rear, so the pop-down seats. So what's the storage like? Let's find out, shall we? Right, so a little challenge for the end of the, the video is we've got to put an eight-foot Christmas tree in the back of the Land Cruiser. So I'm here at Penrose Christmas Trees with Carl. Yeah. Do you reckon it'll fit? I shouldn't see one, aren't you? If not, good job he's got a split tailgate. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right, so Carl's gone off to wrap it up. Now, it's come quite a theme today. I'm not saying anything, but it doesn't look good, Land Rover, does it? It doesn't look good. It's a shame now, because these are coming quite rare, the 300 TDIs. Is it heavy? <laughs> this is the real test, isn't it? How'd you do that? <coughs> yes. <coughs> Just let you know I've received no help today. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> that was a Land Cruiser for you, isn't it? So that's 60 quid's worth of eight foot Christmas tree in the car. Now, to be fair, the Christmas trees here are proper good quality. And what they've done, Penrose, to be fair, they've set it up uh, brilliant. And I think that is pretty much it. I think we've covered everything today. We took it on some of the country lanes, down the roads. And look, we've even put a Christmas tree in the back. That is Land Cruiser territory. But anyway, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We're back in the new year with a completely new series and new cars. See you then.